Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and today is going to be a really special video. I've made some coffee because we're going to have loads of fun today. Today I'm going to compare the SSL Fusion to the Rupert Neve Designs Portico 2 Master Bus Processor. I know that many people are wondering, should I get the Fusion or should I get the Master Bus Processor from Neve? Which one is better? What are the benefits for each unit? And many of you have requested that I make this video. So here it is. Today, I'm going to compare these two units. I'm going to play as much material as possible through them. And I think that by the end of the video, you'll be able to judge which unit is right for you. Right after this. So I'm really pumped to make this video because to be honest with you, when I was researching about these units, you know, I was thinking which one should I get, I was really hoping that there would be a video like this out there. And maybe there is, but I wasn't able to find it when I was searching. So I promised to myself that if I got these two units, I would make a video so that you can listen to how these machines sound like. Now I'm going to say straight up. They're both amazing. I'm very sorry to break it to you, but they do very, very different things. So if you think that it's either the Fusion or the Portico 2 Master Bus Processor, think again. They don't do the same things. They overlap in some areas, but that's pretty much it. Now, why do I have both units? Exactly because of this reason. They do different things, they allow me to achieve completely different sounds, and granted these units are not cheap, the Fusion is a little bit more affordable, the Neve is an expensive unit, but for me it made sense to have them both because that's what I do for a living, I do mixing and mastering production for a living, and I want to be able to give the artists that I work with and the clients that I work with the best sound that I can possibly give them. And these machines allow me to do this. So on this video, I'm going to try to speak as little as possible. So I'm going to give you an overview of each unit. I think that you can find this on many other great YouTube videos. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I'm going to play the same material on the Fusion. And then I'm going to play the exact same material on the Portico 2 Master Bus Processor. So let's start with the SSL Fusion. Very quick overview because I want to jump into the sound examples as soon as possible. We have an input trim. This is really useful if you want to boost your level, if you're going with a low level so that you can drive these nice modules that we have after this. Or if you're going a bit harder than you want, you can just pull it down so that you can have a little bit more headroom to play with. Next, we have a high pass filter. This is 30, 40 and 50 Hertz. Then we have the Vintage Drive, which in my opinion is one of the most interesting things in this unit. Really nice, oozes of character this one. And this is one of the things that you might want to drive a little bit harder with the input trim if you wish to get even more character. Then we have a Valid EQ, Low Shelf and High Shelf. Very self-explanatory, but we're going to listen to it. A high frequency compressor. This allows you to get a little bit of a smoother sound because it compresses the high end. It almost emulates a little bit of the tape effect in a way. Then we have the stereo image. We have space and width. Again, I'm gonna show you this with examples. Then we have a transformer section. We can turn on and off the transformers to add a little bit of character in the low end. Then we have a very interesting, and I use this a lot, insert section where you can insert another processor in between the fusion. So for example, if I activate my insert here, now I have my SSL compressor that's on top. It goes into the fusion, so it gets inserted into the signal. And I can say I want this to be pre-EQ or post EQ. And with this combo, I have a beautiful SSL sound in my mixes. And then if I don't want the compressor, I can just disable it. Then we have a bypass button right here. And there are some other things that you can do that are hidden. For example, if you press and hold the high frequency compressor button, then you can activate a listen mic compressor. This is really aggressive. I will leave you to check this out, what it is and what it does, because I want to jump into the sound.
going to show you what happens if I use my insert and use my SSL compressor there. So you will see that when I activate it, I'm going to be able to run the SSL through the Fusion. So I really like the insert function there. It really makes it super easy to incorporate a different piece of gear inside your Fusion processing. And to be honest with you, this makes total sense because the Fusion doesn't have a bus compressor. And this is one of the things that the Neve does very well. The Fusion doesn't have a bus compressor to begin with, okay? So you will need a bus compressor if you want to complete the signal chain. So just consider that. You can of course use a plugin. I used to use the SSL native plugin and it sounds great, so no problem with that. But if at some later stage you want to incorporate a bus compressor into your signal path, you can do this with a Fusion. I found this very, very useful. Now let me bypass it and let's play a pop mix now. Now, you will notice I'm going a little bit over the top with it. That's because I want you to hear how this unit sounds. I would probably go way, way more gentle on a mastering situation, but I hope you appreciate it. This is how it sounds when you crank it, right? I'm not gonna be too gentle, just to let you know. I'm going to try and push these processors to their extremes as well, okay? So please don't be offended, nobody's gonna die. Let's go for another track. Let's go for a rock track this time.
SSL really excels with rock music, right? It has a very aggressive sound. Let's try and activate the listen mic compressor, okay? I want to show you what it does. So when you turn it on, it's kind of a secret thing. SSL didn't talk about it for a while. This is the threshold and this is the mix, okay? So you can blend it in with the original signal. Let's have a listen. I like this, especially with rock mixes. This mic listen compressor can give you a little bit of an in-your-face sound when you blend it in. I love it. And also, it helps you with the crest factor. So the peaks compared to the body of the waveform, they become a little bit more even. So this will help you get a louder master as well if you want to do that. Now, I think I'm going to go for something completely different, and that's an orchestral track and this is where things change okay i'm going to give you my honest opinion the ssl fusion will work great for orchestral stuff but i feel it's a little bit too colorful for something like this so the eq will work great the high frequency compressor maybe it depends on how bright the recording is stereo image is great for this but i would be very careful with the vintage drive and the transformers because with classical music recordings with orchestral recordings you want a little bit of transparency and you want a little bit of more of a delicate sound and we'll get to the neve about this later on but let's have a listen this is the mozart lacrimosa that i arranged a while ago if you haven't watched that video I'm going to link it right here and let's see how it sounds on a classical music track. So you can see that it can open up the sound considerably, you know, the EQ can be nice and smooth as well. It's beautiful. I love it. Like I said, the vintage drive, especially with orchestral music, it can be dangerous to use sometimes because it might distort a little bit. With rock music, with pop music, with electronic music, it always works. I've never found an occasion where it doesn't work. So for me, the fusion is a color box, okay? You have a nice EQ, you have a nice vintage drive, you have the high frequency compressor, which can also become like a really aggressive listen mic compressor. You have the stereo imager and you have the transformers there to add a little bit more character to the sound. Now, when it comes to cons, I would say there's no compressor, no proper master bus compressor there. So you will need to use a plugin or you need to insert one in between so that you can use it. And the vintage drive adds quite a bit of noise. But that's not a big problem for me. I always use an expander when I'm doing mastering with analog gear, like I've talked about in the System 6000 video. I'm gonna link it right here. One of the things that bugs me with the Fusion is that it doesn't have an on-off switch where the Rupert Neve has an on-off switch. But anyway, I'm using my Furman to turn everything on and off, so that's not a big issue, but you should know this. But all in all, for the price, I think this is a brilliant unit. And if you can afford it, I would totally invest on it. It will give you a very nice sound. 
straight out of the box. Actually, I bought this one before I bought the Portico. Now let's move on to the Rupert Neve Designs Portico 2 Master Bus Processor and let's see what this bad boy can do. Okay, so here we are. This is the beauty called Portico 2 Master Bus Processor. This is a device that I've been dreaming of getting for a long, long time. I knew it was powerful. I had tried it in many different studios and this is like a top secret unit. Many people really don't talk about this. Many people do, of course, like I'm gonna do here today, but this is an immensely powerful unit. Now, let's talk about the differences. First of all, the main star of the show for this unit is the compressor, okay? The compressor is super powerful. We have all the usual suspects, threshold, ratio, gain, attack, release. We also have a blend knob so you can blend the compressed signal to the uncompressed dry signal straight away in hardware beautiful. I use this trick all the time when I want to treat a very dynamic mix that has a lot of peaks and valleys, you know, very loud parts and very, very soft parts. This can really help you. Uh, then we have feedback and feed forward, RMS and peak. We also have a side chain. So if you don't want your kick drums to trigger the compressor and have a bit of a more open sound, you can do this. You also have a side chain insert if you want to introduce this side chain externally and we also have a limiter section and the limiter is really really powerful i've seen a lot of videos about the master bus processor and many people don't touch the limiter i don't know why i don't know why it's it's very strange to me that was the one thing that i wanted to check out when i was looking at buying this unit and there were very few videos that were touching on the limiter this is an analog limiter by the way then we have the other star of the show which is the silk blue and red if you've watched the other video that i've done for the portico 2 channel strip that you're listening to right now on my voiceover actually you will know that i'm a big fan of the silk circuits that uh, rupert neve designs have on their units as you can see attack release you can go very fast or very slow the release can go up to three seconds it's crazy uh bypass all button great and then we have a stereo field editor and this is a little bit different to the SSL Fusion. This is the only place where they have a little bit of a similarity. You could call the Silk a similarity to the Vintage Drive, but I think they sound completely, completely different. And the Stereo Field Editor, some people compare it to the stereo image of the SSL, they're completely different. Yes, at the very core, at a very basic level, you can just boost the mid information and the side information, but that's just part of the story. The Rupert Neve designs give you a lot of power with this because they have incorporated an EQ that you can apply to the mids or the sides, and then you can even send this to the compressor and blend the compressed mid and side signals with the actual dry signal. This is a little bit more complicated and I understand why, again, many people don't touch on this on reviews for the master bus processor because it's a complicated subject to touch on, but I'm going to show you all of this today. If you're looking for a unit like this, I know it's very pricey, so I'm going to try and give you as much information as possible. I'm gonna start playing some music for it and I'm going to start with the compressor first. And what I want to tell you straight away is that you can pay attention to the ratio here. This compressor is very sensitive and very responsive to the ratio that you set compared to other compressors that you see for master bus. If you go 2 to 1, it will compress 2 to 1. If you go 5 to 1, it will compress way, way more. It's very versatile. I use it not only for mastering, I use it also for drums, I use it for vocals, I use it for many, many things, but this might be a video on its own.
see how much body it added to this, you know, quite part of the mix. This is what this unit does and I really love the way this compressor works. It's really, I don't know how to explain it, it really gives you an expensive quality when you add it to the master bus, even when you add just a little bit of compression, you know, or if you run it through the unit, because of course this unit, it's neat, so the transformers is what makes this a uh, special unit. Like with the Fusion, completely different sound, but if I use both units together, which I do, that's why I bought them uh, both, because I run the Fusion into the Rupert Neve Designs Master Bus processor, and they complement each other very, very well. But if I have the Neve, then I'm not using the Transformers on the SSL, it gets too much. Let's keep listening, and I'm going to engage the Silk now. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds really, really beautiful. And by the way, I'm trying to level match, but honestly, that's not the point with these units. When I use analog gear like this, I want them to give me this amazing gain and this kind of depth from the electronics, you know? So I'm not necessarily level matching. I know what I'm doing with my gain staging. If you do your gain staging right, watch the video that I've done if you're not sure how to do this, then this unit will sync. And that is why you need to do proper gain staging. And you need to learn gain staging even if you're working just in the box. With analog gear, gain staging is key. You can't do any of this without proper gain staging, okay? But the silk red really opens up the sound. It really gives you a beautiful, you know, presence in the top end, in the mid-range. It brings out the vocals. I found that it's one of these things that it's not really an EQ. It's harmonics. It's a little bit of harmonic distortion. It sounds great. The blue one, I would use it if a mix lacks punch in the low end. If it lacks bottom end, this can really come to the rescue. Now, let's go ahead and play a little bit more with the compressor. I'm going to engage the limiter now. And right now, and I think that's a really remarkable thing with this piece, we are compressing around 10 dBs, limiting, actually, because these guys, the compressor and the limiter, work in synergy with this unit. Do you know how bad this would sound if I limited 10 dBs with, you know, in another way? This thing sounds really transparent. It kind of works in a very intelligent way. It doesn't eat off the transients. I mean, of course, if you overdo it, you know, it will sound squashed, but this is great. And this is why I said this works also great with orchestral music, classical music and stuff like this, when you want the most transparent limiting and compression that you can afford.
let me go now and start tweaking this stereo field editor, okay? Because this is also another big thing that we have. And like I said, they're very different units. You know, the Fusion has an EQ. This has an EQ, but it's not exactly an EQ. You can add EQ to the mids and sides separately, but in wide brush strokes, okay? And that's the most straightforward thing that you can do with this module. Now, if you turn on the depth and the width EQ, now I can start applying EQ to the mids and sides separately. So I could possibly say, I want to have some top end added to the sides and maybe some low end to the lows. Yeah, so I think that if you go to low frequencies and you crank it up with the EQ here, it's the closest you can get to the SSL space. It's not the same though. As you can hear, this is a really, really beautiful way to treat your mid and sides if you're adventurous enough. Now, let me go and play the rock mix now. Okay. Now, I'm going to squash this. And now blend it. Okay, now let's try the EQ. I mean, we're almost at the same level and you can hear the bigness that we get out of this unit. You know, it, the sound is huge. So let me explain what this does. When you activate this one, the signal from the mid and side, so from the stereo field editor, goes to the compressor. So this allows you to blend a compressed signal from the mids and the sides separately and blend it into the dry signal. This is very, very powerful and especially when you cannot go back 
to the original mix. This gives you the ultimate flexibility when it comes to mid-side processing because you can say, okay, I want to compress the mids with this compressor and then I also want to compress the sides with this compressor and get a very, very different sound. It's not for beginners, but when you know how to use it, it can really make a mix sound super three-dimensional. Let's have a listen and I'm going to show you how it works. As you can see, I've unlinked the compressors now. So now I can operate both channels individually. So this is my mid, this is my side. So what I'm doing here essentially is I'm adding mid-side parallel compression. How cool is that? This is like super advanced stuff, but check out the sound. So basically, with this track, I can compress the backing vocals that are on the sides separately to the lead vocal. This is power. Now, I want to run a last piece here. I'm going to play the Lacrimosa again. This is one of the cases where the Portico 2 Master Bus processor excels at. Orchestral music, orchestras, pianos, acoustic instruments that are really hard to compress. This can be really, really transparent. Okay, we just compressed 6 dB on this track. If I used another compressor, it would have probably choked. It would have sounded bad. I didn't even notice it. I mean, obviously for something like this, I would probably not even compress. I would just touch the needle 1 dB of compression, but you can hear how this thing sounds. I haven't even added makeup gain, by the way.
see, it kind of tames this crescendo, but not in a bad way. It doesn't take away from the musicality of it. I can still feel the crescendo. I can still feel the tension there. It hasn't destroyed the dynamics, but in the lower passages, check how much of a difference it does. And that's why sometimes we have this lust for analog gear, you know? These two machines can give you so much color and they sound so good that, you know, I mean, I'm a huge fan of plugins. I think plugins sound incredible. I could do a mix with plugins 100% and I wouldn't really need the hardware. But what these two processors do is really unique. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was lots of fun for me to make and I hope that now if you are between these two units and you're thinking which one to buy you at least you have a good idea of how they sound and what kind of features you can expect from each unit what kind of colors you can expect from each unit personally I love them both they are great for different things and they complement each other really really nicely so in the comments down below let me know which one was your favorite which one did you like and why and if you have one of these, please let me know your experiences in the comments down below. I'd really love to geek out with you about these two units. As always, thanks so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe and all the good stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.